So far, uh, we understood that how to implement uh, basic gates using a uh, neural network, right? So specifically yes. using a single layer, right? Uh, one layer is you, you are able to solve some of the problems. Okay. Now, uh, let's look at the general uh, ANN once again. Okay. So, if you remember the general architecture of a neural network, uh, one side, we have certain neurons taking the inputs. Right? So, what do you call them as? You can have any numbers. Right? So, I'll denote this is X. Right, which indicates that you are trying to take the inputs like x1, x2, x3, etc., up to maybe n number of inputs possible, xn. Right, that, that vector we uh, denote it as x, and we call that particular layer which takes input as this input layer. Correct? All right, now let us assume that we have. Uh, the general architecture, if you remember, right, where, where we uh, draw multiple neurons, right? So numbers can be different in each layer. You can have n number of layers over here. Maybe I'll assume four in the first uh, hidden layer. Then let me assume, say, one, two, three, four, five in the next layer. Then maybe I'm just having, say, three in the last layer, right? So you can. Uh, connect it in any possible fashion, right? You have the facility to miss some connections. Uh, you can uh, leave some connection. You can make all the connection to every neuron, right? So this is the most preferred one, right? Because uh, there is more learning when you do the connections in this fashion. You see, every neuron is connected to every other neuron in the next layer. So this is the most common one, okay? So you have the connections built in this fashion okay so every neuron is connected to everything so look at the number of weights that are going to be decided whenever the machine completely learns its classification right so if n neurons are there in the first layer and say four neurons in the second layer right n into four will be the uh, number of weights correct so many weights are there because every neuron gets four four Right, n such neurons are there in the first layer, right? So you see n into four, right? So same thing, if you have four in the first layer and five in the second layer, four into five, so, so 20 weights are supposed to be updated, right? So you look at the connections now. So one, two, three, four, five, right? This is the first five connections. Then second neuron will also have the five more connections. One, two, three, four, five. So like that you have how many? four connection so 5 into 4 so 20 all right so like that you have the huge number of weights getting updated whenever you have right a huge number of connections all right i will not draw all of them let, let me see i'll draw a few of them okay right yes. very similarly you can also get the connections right i'll, I'll draw it random now so maybe yeah. I, I don't connect all of them let me say i'm connecting something some some neurons only i will connect yeah. okay like this maybe okay now at the end, right, once everything, every neuron learns, right, about uh, the uh, classification, now you can understand that there is, there will be what, uh, the final layer which generates the output, correct? So, what do you call that layer as? There is a final layer, let's assume, somewhere here. So, this is denoted as Y, fine let me have say table and chair that problem which we discussed earlier right so you have two classes like table and chair so table means maybe the first neuron says yes this is one this becomes one for if the input given is a table right so the second neuron will fire or will generate an output whenever the uh, input given data is a uh, say table first one is table second one is chair all right so that's how the connections are going to be made so we have to decide the optimum weights required to identify the required problem right so you can have say y1 here and y2 here these are the outputs right we know that right this kind of architecture is uh, right uh, suitable 
right this this is the general architecture of a neural network now we'll come to uh, the capacity or the capability of the neural networks okay why do you need multiple neural networks uh, why do you need uh, n number of hidden layers right why not one or two because uh, initially we uh, discussed that if you are able to implement the simple basic gates right that itself is a sufficient proof that you can implement anything Correct. So we already had discussed that and uh, we are now very familiar with that. We also have right implemented the basic gates already. Right. Fine. If that is the case, then why do you need right multiple hidden layers? Why not only one layer? Why don't why, why, why don't you consider only single layer? Right? So yes. that's the question. So the answer for that we'll try to give it, give the answer now. Okay, let's consider uh, Okay, let me try to define the layers now. So, if say the hidden layers, the size of hidden layers, layers, I can say size. If the size is right, one or two, right? If the, if the size of the hidden layers, say one or two, you're, we have a name for that. That kind of neural network is actually the general neural network or artificial neural network. This is referred to as a shallow S H A L L O W, right? Artificial neural network. Okay. Now, so the same thing, right? If you consider the neural network in such a way that the hidden layers size is greater than right much much greater than three then this will be referred to as a deep okay deep nn deep neural network so one very basic difference is that so when i say i'm going to implement something using a deep neural network or deep learning concepts the number of hidden layers will be definitely much much greater than three maybe 10 maybe 20 or something Okay, that's the first thing, right? Now, this was a very basic definition of uh, in terms of the difference among the neural networks and the deep neural networks, or when we go for a deep uh, learning concepts, how to differentiate. Right. Now, let's look at the requirement of multiple layers. Why don't you work with the single layer? What happens? What's the what? What are the issues with the single layers? Okay, let's come to that. I, I'll go go ahead and uh, uh, write the truth table of gates once again. Okay, x1, x2, these are the inputs. All right, so we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, okay, let's, uh, I think we solved, in, in class we solved and, and or gate, I guess. Right, so let's look at uh, this 0, 0, 0, 1. This is 0, triple 1. Correct? Forward, we could implement that uh, anyway. It took some time to identify what is the optimum weight and uh, right, uh, what's the bias, bias value required, etc. We, we took some time, right, to do the calculation, and that's okay, that's absolutely fine because uh. We cannot directly jump into the ideal values of weights and bias. Okay, then it, it is not considered as a learning. Learning happens by making mistakes, right? So we put some values, we understand that okay, this is not optimum value, I change, right? And I do that. Okay, fine. Let's let's come to the actual concept now. So let me uh, let me plot something. Okay, let me plot the output of the AND gate first. Okay and see what actually the neural network did okay i want to consider that so let's consider this is the these are the inputs okay this is x1 on one side x2 on the other side okay x1 x2 you know what what are they right so let me mark the points right when both are 0 comma 0 it's this is the point Okay, 0, 1 means x1 is 0, okay, 
my mistake x1 is not 0 x1 is 1 x2 is 0 correct so this is 1 0 right this point is nothing but 0 comma 1 and you will have another point somewhere here that is 1 comma 1 correct so you see the classes are defined in such a way that the whenever one of the input is 0 it belongs to one class correct output is 0 indicate it's class it's one of the class right when both are one right you want it to be a different class yes right now let's try to right analyze the same thing on this graph okay when I, i'll change the color so that we can plot something okay so what are the classes i i mark the classes using different colors so this is a class this is also the same class that's why i use blue color a uh, green color this is also the same class correct which one is a different class the one one is a different class okay so now what actually the neural network did is this it actually tried to plot right a straight line that's all so you see if you draw a straight line like this right it actually classifies correct on one yes. side of the straight line it is class number one on yes. the other side this is class number zero that's all yes. that's what it did okay actually that itself is visible on our uh, it, it's visible in our table right so whenever yes. this is one class this is the other class okay this is what the neural network did let's go ahead let's look at the or here you see zero zero is one class one 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 is the other class correct yes. so this means uh, how the line should look like let's try to draw once one more okay so let me plot graphs like this okay this is the or plot okay this is x1 x2 i'll mark the same similar points right this is 0 comma 1 this point is 0 comma 0 okay this point is 1 comma 0 and the other point should be somewhere here which is 1 comma 1 right now let's mark the uh, various classes 0 1 is a class 1 1 is the same class and 1 0 is the same class right because these three right and the 0 0 which you can see over there is a completely different class so that is this class right so now the straight line which the neural network draws for itself for classification is somewhere like this correct on this side you have class 0 on that side you have class 1 yes so in a sense whenever a point is given for a neural network to test whether it is class 1 or 0 it just tries to identify where is the uh, on what side is this point or what side of the straight line is your point located right side means it will give 1 left side means it is 0 already we have designed that and so we know we are comfortable with that now my question is that why it worked for one layer right because the number of straight line which is expected here is just one okay when i have only one layer right it actually tries to draw one straight line <laughs> okay but now let's look at the uh, another problem okay let me go for a different uh, uh, approach uh, let me go for uh, one of the Say XOR gate, I will consider an XOR gate. Okay, have you, uh, you didn't try for any other gates, right? No. Okay, right, I, I want you to try this later. All right, so this is important. So let's go for XOR gate, right? Yeah. So I'll write the X1 and X2 now. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so what is X1, X or X2? right what's this column it's going to detect the different inputs when the inputs are same zero inputs are different means one okay one zero is a one 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 is a zero okay so this is the xor gate okay now considering this 
let us try to look at the graph all right so this point is zero zero uh, so this is one zero okay this point becomes zero comma one and this point is one one okay now you mark right let me mark the zeros uh, zeros with the red color so zero is a zero zero is class zero one one is class zero okay and let me mark the class ones with the a different color okay so zero one is this this is this now how do you draw the line because you are expecting a straight line to classify correct yes so let's try to do this if i draw a straight line like this it's not the answer because i'm getting a red over here right yes. red is present on both sides it's not an answer so try to draw like this no right that's also not a problem right then maybe this no right so eventually this is also not going to work no. so you see if you it's it's actually you cannot solve using a single straight line Yes. correct you have to go for multiple lines now okay so whenever a single straight line cannot solve a problem we call that kind of problem as a non-linear problem you see it's a not previous problems were linear because linearly you can separate one line can separate the whole classes simple problem problem is very simple in that case okay but now you see you cannot draw a straight line separating the classes at all right so you have options right now the option in this case see you see i have simpler options may not be as simple as the previous one but it is still simple okay one straight line over here one more straight line over here yes this will separate the classes okay but still you see this is not a linear problem because i am using multiple lines as soon as you move to many lines separating your classes, this becomes a non-linear problem, right? Actually, actual classes are drawn in the following fashion. I'm actually connecting these two like this. You see the structure is not a straight line, right? It is some complex structure, right? This is how you separate. But anyway, we will not show the curved parts here as of now. Okay, so let's let's stick to only straight lines for the time being, right? If you draw more than one line, right, then you are able to solve. Okay, fine. But from my basics, which I already have studied, I understand that <clears throat> one line. If you want to. Uh, draw one line you need one hidden layer one layer one neuron isn't it now how many uh, so as per that rule how many neurons you require two right that's the actual actual answer for so if, if you try to solve uh, the problem of uh, what do you call uh, XOR problem in this fashion, right? So anyway, yes. you see you have answer for a OR gate. This is what yes. we did in the last class, right? You have an answer for OR gate, AND gate, etc. Right? Wherein you see only one neuron is there, right? So this is actually a homework for you. You try to solve, use a single uh, neuron uh, for classifying the XOR gate, okay? You try, all right? Then you try with the two neurons as well. Right, so I'll give you the idea what you are supposed to do. Okay, so single neuron anyway, you know, right? So single neuron, I'll not tell you anything. Right, so let's go for uh, what do you call the if you want to build it two different neurons, how do you do that? Okay, so this is what you are going to draw. Only the drawing part I will tell you, remaining part you have to implement. Okay, so inputs are there the x1 and x2. Okay, these are the two inputs. Now, as I told you, have to use two neurons, right? So, two of those will come into picture. The inputs will be taken from every x1 will go to both of them. Even the x2 will go to both of them, okay? So, you know that you, you will have a weight here, another weight here, 
third weight here and a fourth weight here okay for each of them you are going to have a biasing i'll call this is b1 this is b2 okay maybe right you can call weights as w1 w2 or maybe 1 to 1 w11 this is 2 to 1 w in the, in the sense it is x22 first neuron so i call it as w21 so this should be x12 so this is 1 2 this is w22 maybe you can give any name doesn't matter okay and then every neuron has its own right activation function by default i know that i am going i am deciding 0 or 1 so which activation function is this what's the name Yeah, it's hardling, correct? Okay, this is. So you have two outputs, Y2 coming up. Now, final answer is only one, right? So in a sense, I, I whenever X1, X2 is given, I don't want two outputs. I want only one output, correct? Output should be either zero or one. So to convert these Y1 and Y2 to single answer, I will use another neuron. Now you see the number of layers come into picture. Previously, you see, you never looked at the layer, correct? Now you see the layers coming up. Right, I'll draw the layers later. So you see, you have two different uh, uh, weights, uh, two uh, two different outputs getting converted into a single output here. So this will be the Y. Okay, maybe this is uh, you can call this is uh, a, 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 maybe W two uh, W two dash maybe right. Okay, W two double dash maybe something you can call. Okay, again you have another weight. Say this is B three. Right, okay. Uh, I cannot draw the output directly because I have to use a activation layer, right? So I'll draw an activation function over here. Okay, so this function will decide you uh, what's the output. All right, so let me draw so like this. So this is 0, 1. Again, I'm assuming a hard limb here. You can change if you want, you can definitely change this. So this is the structure you are going to use when you design a uh, two layer. Now, where are the layers, right? You see the input comes from this side, input, hidden, and one output layer, correct? So X is defined, that's the input layer, and internal calculations do happen over here. So this is the hidden layer, and one neuron is responsible for generating the output, right? There are two inputs. Okay, so you can see that this is the input, this is the output layer, this is the hidden layer, right? So now you see hidden layer has two neurons, right? Basic concept still remains same, right? I am trying to draw, draw two straight lines, right? For which, according to my basic rule, I have to use two neurons. Okay, so uh, one gate uh, which is, uh, uh, which we consider now is XOR, which is the other gate uh, from, from the basic knowledge of uh, logical or digital circuits? Can you answer uh, that question? Which is the other gate that you might require uh, two straight lines to differentiate, right? You consider all the gates you know and uh, try to give me an answer. You take your time, no problem. Yeah, sorry. XNOR gate, right? So if you remember the XNOR, that is the complement of a XOR. So uh, that also requires, right, uh, two different uh, neurons, right? All right. So now uh, our basic intention is to look at the implementation of this, right, on a uh, uh, on maybe uh, a software tool, preferably MATLAB. Okay, so how to implement this over there in MATLAB is actually uh, what you need to know, right? Before we go to the deep learning concepts. So whenever we have more than one hidden layers, the weight updation is optimum whenever we use what is called as a learning rule. Speci it specifies in what order 
the weight gets updated okay so the, let's consider one example now this is an example learning rule again this is a part of a neural network okay so this is the simplest one we uh, called as Hebbian, H-E-B-B-I-A-N, Hebbian uh, learning. Rule. Right. Now, it has a standard rule. It's like an algorithm only, right? So, the, uh, the steps you are going to follow in order to apply the Hebbian learning rule are, are as follows. Okay. So, this is the step number one, right? You always initialize the weight and the bias right to zero right you see actually we can start with any any value right uh, if you remember uh, maybe for a and gate or the or gate whichever we designed in the previous classes right we started with some random value say one 1.5 something correct you took the weights initially you didn't start with zero right you st you started you started from one x right? and the bias was one and when the bias was not working we changed the bias slightly by we varied by an amount of 0.5 reduced by 0.5 increased by 0.5 you see that it actually went in that way you started with some some other number other than zero right but in this heavy and learning rule you always okay start with this so the second step is that you define the required activation function dependent depending on what type of output you want this is what we already have discussed right various activation functions are capable of producing variety of range of outputs correct so for example the hard link can generate only zero or one at the output it cannot generate any intermediate values or any other values right whereas if you want to go for a range between 0 to 1 right you have to go for any other activation function continuous function correct so like that so we the st second step is to define uh, the activation function right now the third step is that uh, calculate the output of each neuron. Right? And assign this y is the output. Uh, let me just write it this way. So y is equal to, let's say, let's call this as a target all right then the fourth step is actually the application how the weight gets updated right so update the weights and bias so this is the weight wi is equal to i can write wi plus one the next one is wi current weight plus xi is the current input into y okay where y is the target already we defined that y is a target yes okay and then uh, we need the bias okay so bi plus one is equal to bi the old value of the bias plus one okay now you see that uh, what exactly what's going to happen uh, when we do this is so you how do you calculate y y is equal to b plus a summation of uh, its inputs into weights correct x1 w1 x2 w2 plus x3 w3 at the end you add a bias to that isn't it yes, right now <coughs> uh what is the, what is the ultimate target I'll, I'll draw the same diagram once again okay just for our reference so we had the coordinates here so maybe this is x1 this is x2 and we had the classes now it's not the same old problem we have a different problem so i don't draw the same 
coordinates now so it's something else okay we had we let's assume that we have this is the line y okay this is y y is equal to this is that one correct so n <coughs> for any value of input that lies on the line y becomes equal to zero correct y is zero for any point that is on the line anything on this side of any point which is present on this side of the line can be maybe plus one Okay, any point which lies on the other side of the line, maybe this is minus one. Correct? It becomes zero on on that line. Correct? Yes. Are you okay? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now I'll write that point so that I I'll try to understand what exactly is going to happen here. All right. So uh, this is on the decision boundary. that is y becomes equal to 0 isn't it on the decision boundary it is 0 so 0 should be equal to b plus summation w i x i so for our previous problems i was equal to 2 correct only two inputs so 0 becomes equal to b plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 correct so actually i should be able to calculate the x2 dependent on this so keep only x2 on one side take everything to the other side what happens this is minus b plus w1 x1 divided by w2 correct so this is nothing but minus b by w2 minus correct correct sorry that's my mistake i'll correct this is minus okay so this is minus b by w2 minus x1 times w1 by w2 so this is what we get now right in the sense this is how it it actually you are supposed to uh, write the equation of the straight line using this concept this particular see x2 is what x2 is your uh, y axis correct see it's actually a straight line in, in other words this is the straight line so you see x2 is equal to minus b by w2 minus x1 times w1 by w2 so you, you can actually compare this with the output y is equal to this is a c for you okay plus x times m y is equal to mx plus c is what is a straight line so m is minus of w1 by w2 c is minus b by w2 x2 is your output in the sense of y axis so that's a y are you okay okay now let's go for an example quickly to understand this whole thing whatever i discussed it it may it, if you have understood completely absolutely fine otherwise i'm going to make this thing very clear to you now okay all right let's go for uh, uh fine let's let's say i i want to design something right uh, uh, let's go for uh, a simple and gate but i want to go for a bipolar one. okay so this is the question designing a uh, bipolar output and gate right using the same thing using what using the heavy and learning group all right so this means uh, let's write what are the requirements now so i'll write uh, i'll make a table now this is my inputs inputs are x1 x2 and the bias i'll separate them okay and i will write a target now because it says that you write a target as y Right? In the steps, you might have already seen that. Correct? Then, uh, every time you give an input, your weights will change. Correct? So, this is what is the change. Change in weights and bias. Okay? So, in the sense, 
if you have x1 x2 and a bias how many weights should change there should be a change in weight double delta w1 delta w2 okay and delta uh, b change in bias so using the change in bias i will update my weights okay so this is the next weight so what happens to w1 what is a w2 and what is a w, uh, b okay are you fine with this okay so whatever is required i have written but just before this let me write the equations once again for your reference okay so it says that w i is equal to w i minus 1 right plus this is the current x i times y correct so wherein you see you see that the notation is this delta w i is equal to x i into y so that is this x i into y is nothing but delta w that's that's the delta w which we have written here on the table so how do you calculate delta w it is simply x i into y okay right to that you add the old weight to get the new weight okay when when we do one step it, it becomes very clear to you all right so let me fill the inputs and the targets first so it is bipolar so whenever we say bipolar you know that both positive and negatives will come so one one is my first input one minus one is the second input minus one one is the third input and minus one minus one is the fourth input okay and i will keep the bias value as one for the time being okay right and what are the targets when both the inputs are one output should be one when any other case output should be zero but here no zero since it is bipolar you are expecting a minus one this is fine right okay now so let's initialize initialize in the sense the first values of the weights are zero correct if you remember right so you always start with zero that's the initial weight initialize the weights and bias to zero is what was mentioned earlier correct now calculate the delta w1 right how do you calculate delta w1 what is the equation right so just calculate that this is one correct what should be delta w2 once again one what is the delta b that's also once again one correct now simply add them to the previous weights what are the previous weights zero so zero plus one is one zero plus one is one zero plus one is one so you train the machine once using the heavy and learning rule now okay now in the next stage what do you do you would repeat the steps once again right so 1 into minus 1 is minus 1 minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1 right 1 into minus 1 is a minus 1 yes. same thing now whatever you did now in the first step repeat that but the inputs are changed now that's all yes. now what do you do in the last case add them so this is 0 this is 2 this is 0 are you fine okay now tell me the values of delta w1 w2 and b for the third line okay. uh, 1 into minus 1 right let's check it should be minus 1 all right then you are multiplying this with this first then the my one into minus one is minus one once again one into minus one right yeah okay so you get a minus one here okay now add them up to give the next values next columns one minus one all right go ahead fill the fill these values No, 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 check. Okay, first one is plus one. Then 
plus one and minus one. All right, now you update. This is two, two, two minus two. All right, so you finished your training because whatever inputs you had, you completely given to the machine. Now the machine updated the weight according to a rule. And at the end, whatever you get are the final weights and the bias. Okay, so this itself is the, it represents the final values of weight and the bias. Are you okay? Okay, now let's see. Uh, we said as of now we are saying that machine has learned something, etc. Right? So let's see whether this actually works. All right. So what is the equation you wrote? X2 is equal to minus x1 times w1 by w2 minus the b divided by w2. Are you okay? This is the equation. Substitute now. We, you got all the values. So x2 is equal to minus x1 times what is w1? 2. What is w2? 2. Right? You can see here from the final values. Minus. What is a b? Uh, b is uh, how much? B is minus 2, all right, divided by W2 is 2. So every 2 will cancel. So your equation is minus X1 plus 1. It says that X2 is equal to minus of X1 plus 1 is the straight line, which actually classifies your problem. All right, let's verify. Okay, let's draw that. But before drawing that, we need to mark our... Uh, the required uh, points, correct? So let's draw them first. So, okay, so this is x2, this is x1, they are the inputs. Now, since you are giving the bipolar, right? So, since it is bipolar, right, uh, what are the points that we are trying to draw here? It's one is a one, comma one. Uh, no, no, not one. Sorry, sir. this is not one comma one. My mistake. So if this is one, this becomes one comma one. Correct? One comma one is one number. Then minus one comma one is here. This is the second uh, point. All right. This is one comma minus one. All right. And this point will be minus one comma minus one. Correct? These are the bipolar inputs represented on a two-dimensional space. Are you okay? Right. Now, let us see whether the machine gave you the right answer. Okay. We have to plot this straight line. X2 is equal to X1 plus 1. So, how do you plot this? Mark any two points on the graph and connect them. Correct. So, let's make X1 equal to 0. When X1 is 0, what is X2? x2 is 1. So, your 1 point is, right, 0, 1 on the graph is 1 point on the straight line. Let me mark that. 0, 1. Where is 0, 1? It is this point. Okay. Also, let me go ahead with the other one. That is, I'll make x2 is 0. x1 is? So, okay, I think I marked the previous point wrong, right? This is that point, right? 1 comma 0 is this. This is 1 comma 0. And uh, now I am getting 0, 0 comma 1. 0 comma 1 is this. Alright. Okay. So this is uh, 1 comma 0. Alright. Okay. 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 we marked. Now you connect them using a straight line. Because that's the equation. Right. So whatever you are writing here is that line. So let's try to draw the line through these points. Okay, will this classify, will, will, is this line classifying? Yes. Right, correct? You can see that, right? When both are 1, 1 is 1 class. Okay, whenever it is, one of them is minus, it's the other class. Yes. Absolutely fine. See, Habian learning rule works. Right? When, when I say machine has learned something, that actually refers to updating the weights so that you are able to classify the issue.
whatever is the problem you are able to classify again we are learning in terms of very simple cases like and gates or gates but it is the ultimate thing we know that anything that implements basic gates right is sufficient to implement any complicated problem in the world right so that's the basic and we are sticking to the basics now and uh, you know now that using these basic learning rules we are capable of building the uh, neural networks which can solve our problems